everyone, welcome back to the Bookshelf Odyssey. My name is Art, if you're new. Uh, I am currently on a four mile hike at a state park nearby where I live and I'm listening to an audiobook uh, while I'm hiking around. It's a gorgeous sunny day. Uh, it's September 5th, Labor Day, and I'm working on my uh, 30 books in 30 days challenge while also getting out to get some exercise. Uh, so far this month, I've finished three books, which is a bit of a bit misleading because I started these back in August, but I finished them up. And uh, the first one I want to talk to you about is called Other Lands by Thomas Halliday. And it's a book that uh, explores Earth's ancient past. And the author takes his knowledge of um, evolution and science and, and uh, the evidence that uh, he sees and creates this uh, amazing, amazing picture of how he thinks the world used to be. It, it's, it's vivid, it's descriptive, it's good writing, and it makes you think. Uh, so from that standpoint, if you're looking for, um, you know, something, a dry science book, that's, that's not what this is. It's almost like a documentary where you, you can he just writes so vividly and clearly you can see what he's describing the animals the the dinosaurs the what the way the world used to look uh, you know according to him for myself as a christian uh, there's often that conflict of science and faith which i don't think necessarily needs to be uh, mostly i i appreciated reading it just to get uh, an opposing viewpoint you know i acknowledge that uh, i i have my own biases and i am not opposed to science uh, at all. And sometimes I, I joke that I'm a Christian, but not a very good one. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be open to some of these things. So that's partly why I read his, his, his book. Uh, but it was overall is very well written, very beautifully written. Uh, and it got me thinking and, and thinking through some of the issues that uh, science and faith tend to conflict in. So I appreciated that very much. And I especially liked uh, the epilogue of his story uh, where he talks about, you know, he, he spent the book talking about our past. He, he spent the epilogue talking about the future and what things could happen. For instance, like climate change and things, if things don't change, the, the, the progress that he sees happening. And I thought a lot of that was very well said uh, and, and kind of tapped into some issues I've been thinking of. So I would recommend it, um, whether you're if you're a Christian or not, I don't think it would matter. Uh, it's, a, it's a good book. I'm just amazed at what evidence we have here in this, you know, in the fossil record and things like that, uh, what we can extrapolate from that and what we can um, uh, come to understand in from times past as to what uh, what could have could have been here. So, uh, yeah, if you want a, a, a fascinating look and a very descriptive look at what the world could have looked like in days gone by um, I would recommend this book uh, anyway so I thought this would be a great place to talk about that as uh, you can see here I am in nature it, it, <laughs> just a, a beautiful place to walk and hike around and uh, what a what a lovely place to think about things so where, where in fact did, have we come from and where are we going as, as society? Um, and are we taking care of the world around us like we should? Some good thoughts from that book. So again, uh, Other Lands by Thomas Halliday. So the two other books I've finished so far our uh, Network Effect by Martha Wells, and that's book five in the Murderbot series, which is another fantastic edition in the series. Uh, that one is novel length, and I believe it won uh, the Hugo and the Nebula Award. I don't have that information on me right now, but um, Network Effect is another great edition in the, in the Murderbot series. Uh, it, the main character calls itself Murderbot, and it's about a security unit droid that gained mastery over itself and now struggles to live among humans with all of the emotions and baggage and everything that um, comes with being human and I, I love its sarcastic wit its um, wry observations 
there's one line about uh, that it observed about how humans look in this constant state of existential dread or something like that. It, anyway, it was it was really good. Um, I don't have any any way to read some quotes to you here out out while I'm out and about, but uh, it's a really fantastic read. And there was one passage particularly that really struck me that uh, to me again reminds me of that murder bot is just one of the best written characters and one of the most fascinating characters of literature right now well without giving away spoilers it thinks one of its friends is dead and doesn't realize that what impact that had on their their system their mental state their you know their really their emotions Murderbot then realizes that you know I've lost my friend and that's bothering me it's just such a well-written scene and the ending was really a beautiful ending and I don't want to give away spoilers it's such a fascinating story so if you like science fiction with sarcastic androids uh, this is uh, this is really a, a great book for you to read and then I finished uh, A Thousand Nights by uh, Ellie Gardner and again that's a retelling of A Thousand and One Nights and it follows the main character uh, her, her name is Z she's in the US military she's an interpreter in Afghanistan and her character is half Afghanistan Danny, half American. She has been writing this, this story. Some of the uh, folk tales and history and culture that she discovered while serving in Afghanistan. Uh, but while she's there, she's captured by some uh, by a local uh, Afghanistan man, and he is going to give her over to the Taliban. So while she's held captive, she is uh, she begins to read them the stories of their people that uh, she has collected and uh, she ties it up into this story frame of uh, a character named uh, Aspa who makes a deal with death to complete five challenges and she will be given um, like eternal life or something like that but uh, so interwoven between Z's story is Aspa's story and sometimes they parallel and sometimes they make uh, interesting commentary on each other, I think. But uh, I loved this book. I loved it, loved it, because uh, you know the author's goal is to get, help Americans better understand Afghanistan and its people and how perhaps Afghanistan needs to be rebranded, not as a nation of war, but of a nation of rich culture and heritage. What I love about the main character is that she gains her freedom, not through violence and war, but, uh, you know, well, and minor spoiler alert, um, not, it's not a major spoiler here, but um, rather than the main character, I love that she responds not with violence and war to her captivity, but with kindness and with words and with stories and the power that has over the, the man who captured her as she begins to realize that he has a family and that things are very complicated in Afghanistan and uh, how she eventually gains her freedom uh, is it, just a remarkable, remarkable story. And I highly recommend it. It's, it's available right now on, on Kindle. Uh, I, I think this is a profoundly impactful story that shows that just because even that there's war, we don't need to respond in violence, but with kindness and love and telling stories that what a powerful impact that has. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend A Thousand Nights by Ellie Gardner and uh, read it. Tell me what you think. And uh, all right, well, uh, those are what I've read so far. I will be updating you again um, in probably a couple days or so. Well, you'll find out where I am next uh, on this uh, walking and reading journey I'm on. Uh, so until next time, take care.